uh, during the war from 1939 to 1945. Uh, I was born in Poland and uh, lived on the border between Poland and the Czech Republic and Germany. Concentration camps, most people don't know what, what they are or what they were. By the way, I have three sons and a daughter and they were uh, only really interested as to what I went through when my son, who is a professor in, at UMass, um, decided that he would like to know where I came from and asked me to take him to Poland to show him. But prior to that, there were other things in the minds of my children so that if uh, somebody loses me or so, so to speak, who, who uh, I can understand it. You have, you have your, your, your classes and your life. It all started actually concentration camps or what was going on in Europe with a guy by the name of Hitler. Hitler was a soldier in World War Number One, which ended in 1918, and uh, he created uh, the so-called Nationalist Socialist Party in Germany. The reason why he he uh, he created a party and promised the people that if they elect him, uh, uh, that he would restore the dignity of the German people and so forth. And uh, there was hunger and there was tremendous unemployment in Germany between 1918 uh, and uh, 1931. Uh, Hitler, because he made all kinds of problems, uh, was put in jail in 1922 and for two years in Munich he wrote a, a book called Mein Kampf, that means my struggle, in which he told um, the people, the German people actually what he intends to do if they elect him. So in, they let him out of jail and in 1933, so that was five years before, six years actually, before World War Number. Uh, two started, um, he uh, organized a party and won the elections. And Hindenburg, who was the, who was the chancellor of Germany, uh, had, to, uh, had to abdicate and Hitler was in charge. His biggest enemies were the, not the Jews, because everybody thinks in connection with Holocaust that this, is, that this pertains just to Jewish people. But his biggest enemies were the communists in Germany. So in order to be able to arrest some of the communists who were his opponents while he was the boss of Germany, um, he faked uh, the fire of the uh, of the government building in Berlin, and accused the Russia a, a, a communist uh, that he has uh, done this. In in order to to make it possible to take care of his opponents, he had to put them somewhere. So he placed them into large camps which he built. But it, that wasn't so easy to do, and he wanted to, he had daily arrests of many people, so uh, buildings which uh, uh, were factories or something, or warehouses which were not used, he placed all of these people into camps. He never needed any kind of, um, he had strictly by, by police power. Uh, power. The Hitler built, first uh, in within Germany, uh, two or three, probably some of you will know, large camps. The, the one the one of the largest was Dachau outside of Munich, and uh, the other one was Buchenwald in the former German Republic. But uh, since this was big enough, in spite of the fact that, that Dachau could accommodate approximately 
40,000 prisoners and Buchenwald could accommodate close to 80,000 prisoners. That wasn't enough. So he made many, many working divisions. There, 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 there were other camps. Well, in 1939, uh, when the war broke out, uh, Hitler uh, overran Poland uh, with a fantastic speed, the so-called Blitzkrieg. He, uh, it took him approximately 25 days uh, to occupy the whole of Poland. He was primarily, in the beginning, interested to arrest all his opponents, and the Poles were certainly not very friendly to Hitler. So he arrested um, uh, at most universities, especially at the second largest university in Europe, which was in Poland, professors. He, he, he canceled all uh, as, uh, the high schools in Poland. There were only grammar schools available because he wanted to, he, he wanted to punish the people. He didn't need any educated people amongst the Polish population. In uh, the, everybody or a number of people must have heard about the camp of Auschwitz. Auschwitz was a camp which was situated about 20 miles from where I was born. In 1942, uh, I was able to, uh, uh, no, I had contact with some people in Switzerland because I went to school in England before the war from 1937 and made it back to Poland on the 1st of September 1939. Um, due to the fact that I had contacts with the outside world, it, that means outside of Germany, by having some friends in Switzerland, uh, I used to get parcels from a young lady in Switzerland uh, with whom I spent some vacation and their parents uh, 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 before the war in 1939. And uh, she, for instance, sent me amongst uh, a, a, a few chocolate bars and some cheese a book about written uh, about Frederick the Great. Now, Frederick the Great, the author of this book was on a, on a list, or the blacklist for authors because at one time he had written something against Hitler. So when that book arrived, plus the chocolates and so forth, they called me in 1942 to the, uh, to the Gestapo, which is the secret German police, which in 1939, as of the 3rd of September, they overrun my hometown at the border, and they wanted to know who that person is. I told them it was just a, a young lady who thought uh, she wants to do me a, uh, she wants to send me some chocolate. Yeah, about how about the book? I said, I didn't even read it. I, I never asked for the book. Well, they put my name immediately on a list of people who are suspicious because they have contact with the outside. In uh, coming back to Auschwitz, in Auschwitz, uh, which was the largest concentration camp, later on called the extermination camp, uh, it was built on an area of approximately 20 square miles. The whole area where many, many people who had houses, the, the houses were destroyed, the whole area in southwestern Poland was taken over, over by the Gestapo, uh, the secret police, and the German SS, that means stormtroopers. They were, they were in charge of that camp. In, uh, uh, due to the fact that I knew someone who uh, was a contractor in my hometown in Bielsko, he got a, uh, an order. He was one of the contractors to go into the camp nearly every day and uh, build the so-called crematoria in Auschwitz. Please stop me whenever there is no time because the, the material is so big that you really don't know. I knew, uh, 
since I knew what the crematorias were for from this friend of mine, uh, with whom I met socially, he just got a job to, to build buildings, but he knew what he was building. And when he had a little bit too much to drink, he told us exactly what was going on over there. So I gave this message to uh, this friend of ours in Switzerland, and uh, that was called Propaganda Against the German Reich. Uh, the parents of this young lady uh, were able to get passports uh, issued by Costa Rica in Switzerland, uh, Central American state Costa Rica, with um, passports for my two brothers, my, my mother and father and myself, uh, once we smuggled photos out to Switzerland. These passports arrived in my hometown in, in 1942 and, the, the, and the, they were uh, confiscated. And in a way, this saved me from uh, some real problem because they wanted to, uh, to have my, my, my father and my two brothers alive because they wanted to know the most important thing, that who sent the passports and who paid for the passports. By the way, if you had any money or, or in abroad and did not, abroad means outside of Germany, and did not have, uh, um, and had a signature over it and did not register it, and they found out there was the penalty of death. Many, many people were, were uh, actually uh, shot because of uh, uh, money which they had abroad. In our case, they couldn't prove it, but in the meantime, they uh, uh, threw us all, my two brothers and myself, to Auschwitz into the concentration camp, about which I told some people abroad what was going on. How do you survive a camp? Uh, in the, first of all, um, with lots of luck and with prayers and uh, and being an optimist being a, a realist to see how things are go with the flow rather than optimist or a pessimist i was lucky enough to got to get a work detail after three weeks uh, where i registered prisoners who arrived in transports and were actually taken to the to the camp as regular prisoners as a prisoner you, you, the minute you entered the camp, that is the last time you heard your name. Then, then the, 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 the people who were sent for work to Auschwitz, they were all uh, uh, tattooed. On, on the left arm, I can show you, I have my number, and the numbers, the numbers are in connection 135,308. That is my number tattooed. Now, uh, that was done only in Auschwitz. The reason why that was done, if you tried to escape, it was practically impossible. You arrived, you lost you, uh, all your clothing and everything was gone. They, they, you went through a, through, a, through, a, through a disinfection and eventually you got some, some terrible uh, striped material and you had a, a, a number no name, just a number and a political sign. That means I happen to have been, uh, uh, had the triangle of a Polish political prisoner. Due to the fact that there were thousands of Polish people brought into Auschwitz and they could not speak German, um, if somebody could speak an additional language, particularly German, um, you, you, you got a started in the summer at uh, uh, six o'clock in the morning till approximately five in the afternoon in the winter it was seven till four every morning on a huge uh, uh, place there was a roll call where every prisoner who lived in 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 in, in one of these barracks uh, had to be counted and then 
went to his uh, work detail, sometimes inside the camp and sometimes outside. Um, food, total amount of calories, uh, approximately between 13 to 1400 calories. You probably eat for breakfast 3000 calories and, and additional 4000 for something, uh, for, for some other meals. We got in the morning approximately uh, 10 to 12 ounces of, of what was called coffee. Um, and then we went out without any food uh, to the work detail. And the first food we got was a soup uh, out of a huge cauldron with which, which we uh, were able, a, every prisoner had a, a, a small a metal cup uh, which you had to, we had, to, had to carry with you to work and you got the soup and you also got approximately 11 to 12 ounces of bread. It wasn't sliced by any means, a sliced bread didn't exist then. But you had to then save this, this bread um, for, for dinner because the next food you only got uh, in, in, again in the morning. That's why people arrived uh, who came and they weighed, let's say, like myself. I was 25 uh, years old when I arrived in, in Auschwitz in 1943, and I weighed probably 180 pounds. But most people who had to exist on this ration and had no connection at all with another prisoners because of favors and whatnot, went down in their weight up to 50 to 60 pounds in approximately six months. And at that point, uh, they were unable to work. And once you were unable to work, uh, the, the man in charge of the barrack where you, where you lived um, simply sent you to, the, uh, to a certain area from which you never came back because most of these people, uh, since they're unable to work, were, were uh, gassed or the ones who were dead were cremated. Um, I was able to, I was liberated on the 11th of April 1945, I know that in, in Buchenwald, that was a camp to which I was transferred. Uh, there practically nobody would have a photo, but just see, this is what I looked like on the 6th of January, pass it around on January 1944. And uh, this is a photo that I was able to get because I worked for the third US Army war crimes investigation team as an interpreter. See, I went to school in England before the war and learned English and uh, Polish and German, so they needed people like that. Uh, do you have any particular questions? Because everybody might be interested in something else. Please just, just uh, ask whatever you want to ask. Go ahead. Do you have a number in here? Yes. No, on, on me, I have the, this number here, tattooed here. See? Oh. See? The, this is, uh, I, I, I never touched that. But I was just telling your teacher here that there are people who actually um, had numbers tattooed in order to get some kind of compensation. Um, so, uh, which is, of course, a fake. But this is definitely my number because 135,000 was, this number was issued in July 1943. And uh, there are exact uh, records in, 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 in Germany in particular for all people who have been in a camp and uh, uh, we got some very small compensation. I just mentioned since I worked for, uh, uh, I was able to work indoors for a factory similar to General Electric, which is called Siemens in Germany. So I worked for nearly a year and three quarters, and now the, the, the German government uh, uh, made them, uh, compensated people who could prove that they were there, so that I got uh, about $7,000 for about two years of work under pretty interesting circumstances. Any any questions? Go ahead. Pardon me. My my, they they both survived. But my younger brother, uh, when he was transported from Buchenwald, which was more or less the center of Germany, 
um, to an outside camp. Uh, oh, by the way, that camp is very well known. It was qu called Camp Dora. They were making the V1 and the V2 bombs, which were used by the Germans, and, uh, and they sent them from Germany to London. London had a terrible problem with, with being bombed during the war. Uh, so on a transport, all the transport trains, of course, were marked with, with Red Cross, but in fact, they were, they were, there was ammunition. So he, my younger brother lost his uh, arm because during the, that was during the day when the train was outside of the railroad station. Uh, always uh, during the day, uh, American uh, uh, bombers uh, flew over Germany and during the night, English. So he lost his arm and uh, he stayed. Um, I found him uh, in, Ju in June 1945, two, uh, two months after I was liberated, because I was liberated in April. And uh, he came to, I was able to get him to this country. He, in connection with his arm, he had several amputations, but he, he uh, managed to get a master's in psychology and he has a PhD at Clark University and he was, he died about three years ago. He was professor of psychology at the University of Texas. My older brother made it, made it home and uh, immediately after the war there were no trains. Um, it was very difficult with Europe to, to get back but he went back to his wife and, and two children uh, my older brother to Poland, and uh, uh, so he's alive. And my father uh, was liberated f also from Camp Dora and marched for approximately, it took him two months to cover approximately, uh, if, uh, approximately 600 miles from the middle of Germany to the western part of Poland. Any other questions? Anybody? Whatever. Okay, go ahead. Like, have you sold it to like publishers or? Uh, have I? Oh, uh, every, uh, m most people have a favorite, uh, uh, possibly prayer book or, or whatever which they keep with them. Um, there are a number, there are thousands of books uh, which were written uh, about camps. And uh, my uh, so-called Bible or the one which, which is totally devoid of sensationalism and, and uh, um, exact uh, statistics and so forth, is Dr. Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, that cost you about six ninety nine, but I understand you can get it on email for, for four dollars. And I met uh, Dr. Frankl, uh, but not in the camp, although he was in Auschwitz and went through just about uh, I had very similar experiences to, uh, to mine. Um, so this is a book, if, if, if you can get a hold of it, uh, that will really open, that, that will really uh, give you an idea what a person, see what, the, what they did at first, I mean once you, once you, once you lose your clothing and, and, and they, they, you go through a disinfecting bath and of course you are, you are shaved just about everywhere, and that's actually good because uh, there was plenty of typhoid uh, in, in, in the camp and, and uh, you were afraid of, of uh, carry, carrying uh, any sicknesses with you. So you, are, you no longer are referred to by name, only by number. Now in, in, in a barrack uh, where we lived in, in uh, Buchenwald, there were approximately uh, 400 people, and the barrack was, uh, was I would say, uh, about one third of the size of this, which is what this is about, about 60 feet, 70 feet. It's about, I would say, it's about 20, about uh, 40 by 60. There were up to 400 people in the barrack. Now, you you had uh, uh, you had a uh, on, uh, on you got one blanket uh, for yourself, but the space in, in which you were sleeping did not allow 
so that you, you could only sleep on the side because there wasn't enough space. That's how many people were crowded in. And um, the, I said that only with, uh, with realism and not optimism or pessimism you can survive it. Uh, I said that because, um, for instance, when, when you give up hope that something will happen, uh, that they will liberate you, that, uh, that they, uh, so then uh, you, you stopped living. In, in September, in December 1944, and, uh, about 80% of the, of the prison population thought that by Christmas 1944 the war will be over and, uh, and the people will be able to get out. Uh, and when this didn't happen, there were 10 times as many people who, who died or committed suicide. Now, uh, in a camp, of course, every camp had, had barbed wire around, but the barbed wire or whatever wire, they had observation posts, especially in Auschwitz, and that's all, all that there were many people who committed suicide by running against the, the uh, uh, wires, which had, uh, I don't know exactly what voltage, but uh, there's practically nobody that survived to touch the wires. But in that w created always a problem to get these people afterwards who were partially burned. And I've seen many people commit suicide this way, so that the guards found out it would be better to shoot them before they get to the wires, and it's not such a messy affair, you know. Any questions? I think she also wants to know, have you told people about this and have they written about your story in any, in any books or in articles or anything? I think that was her uh, question as well. Uh, no, no, actually no, but uh, uh, I, like I say, I don't do that professionally. I, I, I know somebody who you know and so I've, I've given a, a number of lectures like that mm -hmm. because there are very few people who, who are around and they're less and less. By the way, in Worcester, uh, at Clark University, that is the only university in America which handled, which has a chair. In other words, you can get a PhD in Holocaust studies. And it is not about Jews. It is, it is also about what's going on in, 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 in Africa, what went on in Armenia, what, uh, what went on in Somalia, and so forth. And they have a very, very good lecture tonight on, on somebody who was able not to get to a cabin by, by, by having false papers and posing as somebody else. But that is the exception. 90% 90, 90 of the people who were on Hitler's list for having committed something uh, uh, were sent to camps. And um, for instance, I, I, some people say, well, how many people were, 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 were gassed and how many people were shot and so forth? They're all kind of statistics, but I can tell you one thing. Every single day, there were 10 of us in that, in that registering office, which was right to the left side of the main gate of Auschwitz. By the way, I was there uh, three times or four times in the meantime. And uh, transports would arrive in Birkenau, which was, by the way, in Auschwitz there were only men, but in Birkenau there were, there were also women. Uh, and. Uh, 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 transports arrived daily. The smallest transport I ever had to register was about 4,000 people, out of which approximately uh, 15 to 20 percent were found by a German SS doctor uh, to be fit to work for a while. Now, um, and uh, so, so, but most of the time, transports every night, we had to register and they, they wrote in, in, in the beginning, in 1942, they wrote a postcard for, to everybody who came to the camp and never came out of it because he was sent to the left. The ones to the left out of, out of a huge transport which arrived uh, uh, went uh, directly uh, to numbers like, like I did. Um, and and uh, my work was, was, was used for a while. Um, these people uh, were able to write a postcard home that they are in good shape and so forth. But the other ones, they said, the, the ones who went to the gas, in 90% of the cases, the, the, there were letters 
a, 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 a printed letter written that person so and so uh, had a had a heart attack and didn't survive. So, any other questions? Go ahead. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They don't have that. Go ahead. Do any specific groups stick out in your mind in the camps? Do what sticks out? Uh, any groups? Well, uh, they were in Birkenau, which is, was a female division of Auschwitz. They created a camp for gypsies. There were approximately 90,000 gypsies uh, just because they were gypsies, just like the Jews, just because they were Jews who were, who were eliminated in, in Auschwitz. Go ahead. In Birkenau, rather. Hi. I just wanted to thank you. Like yeah. taking your time here and like no, go speaking to us. I know it's like pretty hard to talk about. Like no, the, no. I just wanted to thank you. Yeah, okay, well that's very nice. But if you have any questions at all, like I say, I, I have approximately uh, 12 hours of tapes about certain <laughs> things. So how can, you, how can you put that all into a, into a 45 minute uh, lecture? But Anyway, uh, believe me, uh, the number is right and the photo is right, and, uh, but there are very, very few now who are left. The, um, it's, uh, it, was a, it was a very trying time. I mean, there's, there's no question about it. And, uh, but there, there were many people who, who, who can talk about it, but I, I, after, I, I didn't have too much of a problem. Now, when you, when you are in a camp and uh, you know how many of your friends uh, haven't made it and, and uh, you were in constant fear and so forth, um, you, you develop uh, 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 some kind of a system where you say to yourself, nothing is going to happen to you. And, uh, but uh, uh, it, was, it was really, really very difficult. Uh, uh, because it was so hopeless. There was no, by the way, they never, when, when you were sent, in my case, I was sent to with my brothers and so for investigative purposes to the camp, but um, uh, th there was never a time where they said, look, you have been sentenced. The police arrested you and they sent you into what they call protective custody. <laughs> Any other questions? Anybody? Pardon me? Do you know that camp? Yeah, I was in Buchenwald. The photo was taken in Buchenwald. Yeah, this is the, 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 this is how we, how how we were lying on on these. Uh, the, this Buchenwald is in the middle of Germany. I was liberated on the 11th of April 45. But like I say, I was particularly lucky because the first of all, the the commander of the Buchenwald camp, the American commander, was a Captain Ball. And um, I talked to him, and he, he, I worked as his assistant for about, for about 10 days. And then um, in the May of 1945, uh, General Eisenhower sent uh, representatives of the Congress uh, to see uh, some camps. And Senator Leverett Saltonstall of Massachusetts, who was the senior senator when JFK was a junior senator, who was sent to Auschwitz and I showed him the camp so that uh, uh, after about a two hour tour, uh, he said to me, if you ever wanted to come to the States, just write, and he gave me a piece of paper. He just said, SEN, uh, Leverett Saltonstall, Washington, DC. And so I got the visa within practically no time. And I arrived here in 1940. Oh, you have the photo. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. That number that's on there, is yeah, no, no. This is the, uh, my number is 135308. That is in, in Auschwitz. This was the date when I was transferred from Auschwitz to Buchenwald on the 6th of January, 44, at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then on the 11th of April, 45, I was liberated. Uh -huh. so that's what it is. And we're basically out of time. Yeah, well, yeah, no, yeah. I don't know if I want to thank Edwin for uh, coming all the way here. <laughs> okay, that's right. It's a pleasure. No problem. No problem. Good. Good. If anybody has any kind of specific question which I can answer.